Malini, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. It is so cool to have you with me. It's awesome to be here. Um, it's pronounced Malini. Malini. Oh my God, I've been saying it wrong <laughs> this entire time. Malini, <laughs> awesome. Okay, Chetty is right though, right? Chetty's right. Okay, okay that's like half a mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> so before we get into uh, the topic of our conversation today, um, I have a couple of questions I want to ask you, which I call short answers, no follow-up questions. Um, these were not something that you could prepare for, uh, so I'm, I'm quite excited to see how you respond. But uh, it's really no pressure. Uh, it's really just for a little bit of fun. Um, so I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, trick here is to not think too hard. So just say what comes to mind first. Uh, so first question, after a really tiring day, how do you spend your evening? Chilling out with my family, normally with a glass of gin. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> And what's a really good book that you've read recently? Recently, unfortunately, one of the, the most recent books that I've read is probably something like the, a coursework or parcel book that, I, uh, that I've done. Uh, one of my most insightful and inspiring books of all time is probably um, Software Craftsmanship. And it's work relevant as well. Um, and it just kind of like transforms how I think about things. And tea or coffee? coffee how do you take it uh almond milk uh and uh, i'm super spoiled i think that's it i ordered something called the almond italian and the dude prepped it for me as he sees me walking up to the <laughs> that is service in a sentence <laughs> in a sentence how would you describe your feelings towards superstitions um i have some <laughs> So that tells you anything. <laughs> and what about luck? Um, I guess there's uh, like 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 you often wish people good luck and things like that. I feel like uh, I'm one of those people that believes that uh, believes in energies and things that you put out and what you get back. So I'm completely open to the idea of like like uh, wishes of good fortune and and having luck. <laughs> so. Definitely open to it. And what is something you're glad you said no to recently? Going into the office. And last question. Uh, if you had if, if you had it to spare, what would you spend a hundred rand on right now? Um hundred bucks right now. I would want to go to the zoo. I know that sounds lame, but uh, <laughs> I just really want to go. <laughs> I've been thinking since we went into lockdown. Um uh, so yeah, I think that comes to comes to my just want to go somewhere and like specifically the zoo. I like it. I was gonna say if 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 that's not the mantra for lockdown, then I don't know what is. It's just like anything <laughs> yeah. outside, please. <laughs> um, cool. Thank you. That was very interesting. Um, also, just a disclaimer: if you hear drilling in the background, uh, that is uh, the the team of people on my roof who are fixing beaks. Um, so just bear with me. Uh, I've I've had to put up with it the whole week, but they're angle grinding tiles, um, and it is very loud and annoying. But just if you hear it, that is what it is. Um, but like I said, uh, thanks so much for joining me. Um, before we get into uh, what we're going to talk about today, I thought uh, for anyone who doesn't know Investec, or at least uh, if developers don't know what developers do at Investec, um, maybe we can just start with a little bit of context there. So. Uh, Maybe you can just give some insight into what does Investec do and what kind of bank is it? So Investec is what we call a specialist bank. Um, those of you who have been close to it uh, recently in the media, you would have, or rather over the last few years, you would have noticed that we, we used to be specialist bank wealth and asset management and our asset management division has um, over the last year split up, right? So we're primarily a specialist bank and wealth, and wealth manager. And um, yeah, sorry, can you just repeat that last part again in terms of what, um, what you'd like me to say? Sure. So just like what does Investec do? Um, and f maybe from a development perspective, like what, what are the kinds of things that developers work on at Investec? So as part of Investec, you could work on a range of different um, uh, things and a range of different applications. Um, if you focus on just the specialist bank portion of that and what that means, We've got everything in terms of a private bank, online banking offering, um, as well as a range of trading platforms that we work on and associated platforms. We've got a client 
and CIS platforms. We've also got a business banking platform. So um, and we've got a, a range of different risk-related platforms as well. So I always categorize into the four main areas of technology that we have uh, in, in our space, which is private bank, corporate and institutional banking, digital and digital services. Um, so that's how the teams are split. And in terms of your role uh, at Investec, how long have you been there and what sort of uh, roles have you filled? I've been there five years this year, um, a good five years too. And I started off as a developer. And um, I think within the first nine months, I took up the role of team lead of the team that I was working on, which is quite an interesting journey. I'm still uh, taking care of that team, but in a slightly different role that we call, an, uh, call now an application owner. And I now wear um, two hats, as they say. I'm application owner for the platform that I take care of called TCM Online Banking. Um, and I'm the development team lead in the corporate and institutional banking area. So we've moved around a bit. And our recent move over the last year, I should say, was to ICIB or Invested Corporate and Institutional Banking. So, I mean, we we sort of spoke about it last time, and this is now touching on um, what we're going to be talking about in this conversation anyway, but there's a lot of pressure on developers and engineers to continually improve and get better. And I think, you know, you having gone from develop, from developer to team lead um, in a relatively short period of time, um, you know, you, you can sort of relate to that in, in a number of ways. But, you know, developers are arguably in high demand across the world. So companies often expect, uh, expect a, lot of, a lot from their development teams. Um, and of course, then you've got the tech industry, which is evolving exponentially um, every day. So you know, there's a common narrative that I hear um, that leveling up is something you have to do as a developer in order to, um, and they often use the words like stay relevant and keep up. Um, just initially, like, what are some of your thoughts on on those things, and to what extent do you agree, or have you even experienced that yourself? So, I think it's absolutely important to stay relevant. I think that the world, just generally, right, um, even even outside of work, you need to stay abreast of what's happening around you, right? And um, from a more work focused sort of answer, it's. Um, it's super important to understand why why you're doing what you're doing. And in order for you to, to do that well or to understand and contextualize the problems that you're trying to solve as a developer, um, you need to understand what's happening in the economy, how that impacts your organization, and then how can you shift or change that, or how can you improve on things, or how can you solve problems better, simpler, better, faster. You know, um, it, it, the the thing is that it's it's super super important to me uh, specifically to, to stay relevant, and I hope people are thinking that way. And do you think the the just out of interest, do you think the global crisis that we're in now, with like people moving remote and um, you know a, a lot of companies changing some of the ways they approach uh, general workflows, um, do you think that global crisis has affected that necessity to stay relevant, uh, either positively or negatively? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at what's happening right now, if I contextualize it just to invest it, we're being very specific about what we work on and how we focus our people. So it's as it's as simple as um, focusing your people on the right projects, or very even more relevant, we've got COVID-related projects that have gone recently. So you've had to re repurpose teams to looking at that. So in order for you to um, like 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 to make best use of your skills and understand what's going on around you as well and how to apply, best apply those skills. It speaks to the same thing. I would still stay relevant uh, and you'd need to be able to adapt, to, to adapt to what's happening externally and obviously that will impact you ultimately internally. I always reference things back to um, the circles of influence model and uh, I, find those, I find that relevant to a lot of things. So what Could you just give a little bit of a, a insight into that if someone hasn't heard about the, the circles of reference model? Sure, sure, no problem. Um, so things that affect me and would ultimately affect my team, I would think of it in terms of layers of an onion. Um, so things that affect me, things that affect my team, ultimately affect the organization and uh, affect the world. Um, and likewise, that influence goes both inward and outward. I mean, just look at what's happening right now, right? Um, in terms of what I, what I just said to you, uh, the projects that I'm working on have been influenced by what's happening out there in the world today. 
So what things are most important to you uh, as a developer in your career? And I think, you know, you alluded to this idea of being um, being a lot more uh, selective, I guess, of the things you work on, of the things you do. So in terms of, you know, how, how you rank importance um, just as a developer, what sort of things have been important uh, to you in your career? So... One very uh, specific thing, and I've been fortunate to go on um, in their tech developer bootcamp, right? And I can take you through maybe the structure of what that is a little bit before I, before I answer. It's literally a set of books, carters, meetups, a range of exercises that you walk through with a subset or a team, a small team of developers from across the organization. It's super cool. Uh, it's very fun. It's competitive. Um, but what's important is that you're learning lessons and things like that together. And a lot of that, that thinking that I, that I, and a lot of my, um, my journey as a developer and how I now see things has been inf- influenced by um, that coursework that we did and those books that we read. I mentioned one of them to you at the start of this chat, um, Software Craftsmanship. Um, it speaks to things like um, take pride in what you do. Take pride in your craft. Um, don't chip shit. Um, you probably would have heard that from Bob Martin. Um, things like don't leave broken windows. Um, so those are super important things that I value. And to this day, I quote some of those things to my team as well. And are there other things that you've, um, that you've sort of uh, held very close to you um, throughout your career as a developer in terms of uh, like leveling up? Like what, what, what are some of the things that you could point to and say that these, these have been critical to me leveling up as a developer? Um, and maybe there's some like, uh, you know, s- specific ways that you understand leveling up or learning um, and, and what those practical, those, those strategies look like. So for me, um, I kind of categorized learning into three things, right? And it t- also ties back into and references the circles of influence, but um, how I grow my skills, understanding my business context, that's true. And what is the world doing and how is the world doing it type of thing. So literally walking from inward, going outward type of thing. Um, so I grow my skills. I look at things that I, I keep it interesting. I keep it relevant to how I do my job. Um, things that I could, put, that could potentially uh, like influence I could write up in my CV. Um, understanding the business context is super important to me because as I said before, like, you need to understand and, and contextualize the problems you're solving. And in order for you to do that, you need to understand what your organization is about. You need to understand the vision, where are you going? What are you trying to do? How the business is evolving? Even if you just understand the objectives, what, do you, what are those clear objectives that you, that you have as an organization? What, what are you striving for? Um, it could be as simple as making a difference out there in the world or as simple as making money, but you need to know what those things are. Um, so that you can best apply and sharpen your, 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 your toolkit in order to solve um, and apply to those problems. And um, the third thing that I mentioned was around uh, learning about what, how the world is doing. You can't live in a bubble, right? You'll very quickly become irrelevant if you sit there doing things the same way that you've done them like over the years, because um, the world is moving on. They're automating manual processes um, and they're doing some really, really cool things out there. And also, you need to be have an awareness of what's happening with regard to your craft, right? Um, there's this simpler and faster ways of doing and delivering things and delivering software these days uh, than they ever ever were before. Um, years ago, they were writing code on simple text document style things, and now then they have um, uh, IDE, IDEs or um, integrated development environments. As that's a simpler a simple reference to it. So I think those three things. Have, have kind of been what have driven and like guided my learning uh, process. What I really like about the uh, that way of thinking about learning, um, and I think you know, I would I would probably put you up to solve the education uh, education sector's problems for this country. Um, but it's a really it's a really holistic way of looking at it. You know, like uh, just referencing your circle of influence, you the way you grow your skills can benefit the way you understand the business context and understand the world um, as well as if you can understand the world better you you're better equipped to grow your skills because you're sort of not um, and I think this sort of uh, touches on something we spoke about uh, in our previous chat as well it's like there's this overwhelm of information 
Um, and how how do I, as especially a developer, where the industry is moving so fast, how do you know what to pick? Um, how, how how do you know which skills to grow? Um, and and having that sort of holistic view of learning uh, can can definitely sort of guide you in the right direction. But maybe just on that already, can we sort of uh, dive a little deeper into like, given that there is this overwhelm of information, how do you know which skills to grow and when? So I've been selective, but I, I look at it, I literally think about it as being um, making the most effective use of my time. I mentioned to you before that, um, like, I'm a mom to a toddler, I'm, I'm a working mom that, that has its own uh, influences and, and time constraints associated with it. So I've been super selective. I keep it relevant, I keep it interesting. Um, and I've got like a myriad of different things that I can, uh, and ways of learning and, and things that I tap into, right? So if I'll give you an example, like right now, our cloud strategy is like top of mind in the organization. So I've kind of um, penciled in, cool, I need to do either AWS or Azure course online, probably online, um, over, over the next while, because that's super important to the organization. It's part of our, our strategy over the next few years. So that's one example of keeping things relevant. From a development point of view, um, it would be as simple as, okay, cool, contextualize a problem. Um, like, what are we trying to solve? Um, what are the best possible ways to do it? It's as simple as Googling. Or in our case, we've got lots of forums and guilds, team chats, WhatsApp groups, etc. If you look at any of those things and something catches your eye that could potentially help you solve the problem, double click on that. Zoom in on it and, and learn about it. I know you can't click on everything, but you can click on what is relevant to you at that point in time. Yeah, so a cool little heuristic there would be, um, I guess just based off what you said, is like, can, can this solve one of my immediate problems? Um, if so, yeah. learn that now. If Absolutely. not, bench it. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's a really cool sort of uh, tip for growing your skills. Um, I'm curious to know as well, just uh, from personal experience, like my my learning time is often exercise. That's when I have the space and time to listen to podcasts. I also used to do it on the way to work. Um, how do you make time for learning? Like, is do you do you diarize it? Do you have a, a schedule for it? Is it is it sort of baked into your daily routine? What are some of the the strategies that you use there? Um, so I do a few different things. Um, I also do uh, podcasts or TED Talks um, on the way into work. Um, I did a book last year, a really long book on the way to and from work and any opportunity that I got in the day. I don't diarize. Um, I allow it to be, I, I need a bit more flexibility than that because my, my days and weeks um, don't allow for it, right? Uh, so I create space and time and make sure that on any given week, that I have some time to myself, some downtime, or just some time to listen to something that I find interesting or something that I am really keen to get through, like an audio book. I did the DevOps handbook, I think it was last year, the year before, just purely via Audible. Um, other ways of doing it, I have alluded to earlier in the conversation where um, there'll be a topic of discussion and something interesting floating around on a WhatsApp group. And that's another important thing maybe that, um, that, that people should pay attention to. I always, you know, always say that um, if you, you know, you know that, um, that, that line that goes, the smartest one in the room, maybe move to a different room type of thing. So, so just make sure you're part of rooms, guilds, WhatsApp groups and chats um, where you've got people who do actually either have more time or make more time to learn and share content because that's super valuable to me as well. And then I literally zoom in and click in, or to either a quick read or something that I favorite and, and, and make time for it to read or listen to later. So that's, those are some of the things that have helped me a lot. Um, and those are the informal ways of learning, right? That's apart from the day-to-day -day having conversations, good old conversations with, with, with colleagues or, or discussions with friends or the architect on the team or the tech leads on the team, talking about things that are relevant and that are happening. There's also the, the formal ways of learning as well, right? which I'm not opposed to, which I quite like from time to time. I mentioned at the start of this conversation that I did uh, pass on, that it was a formal, good old fashioned, go into a classroom, sit down type of a thing. I just need to be super selective about what I choose to do um, when I choose to do that, that form of learning. 
because um, that's obviously like consuming and it's over a course of weeks and months and, and, and commitment. And, and what's worked well for me is a combination of all of these different things. And I'm curious to know if, if, if there's any other criteria that you use for um, deciding whether something is worth spending time learning now or later. Um, you've already mentioned, is it relevant to me now? Do you sort of have like a, a another list of, and maybe it's a subconscious criteria um, of, you know, like length of article or um, maybe source. Maybe you, you, you tend to pick certain certain websites or certain podcasts over others. Yeah, I definitely think that's true, right? Um, <laughs> I've been very selective when I mentioned that you double click or you, or you you zoom in on on certain people's links or references. I I have colleagues and friends that I I either who either have similar interests or who I know are in the same space or field or dealing dealing with a particular problem that they're trying to solve. I am drawn to articles and things that that person would post. Um, so likewise, I would listen to similar podcasts, not always though, right? Because I, I do believe in like a diverse range of things. Um, but primarily from a person perspective, I've, I'm fortunate in that I have like a really cool clique of friends um, and different pods of us, both at home and work, uh, people that we socialize with that we share content um, just like you share memes for that matter, right? I mean, like um, a week ago, we were looking at uh, a few, a little while ago, we were looking at um, the launch of the, the spaceship. So like like stuff like that, keep it cool, keep it relevant, keep it interesting. Like that, those are the, thing, the things that I actually want to see or hear about. Um, I'm not sure if I answered that well enough. Absolutely, yeah. I think I think like the uh, s- selective learning, I think is a really, really interesting idea. And it's, it's, it, it is quite broad because you can, you can pick pick the actual content very selectively but you can also pick where you engage with content like which whatsapp groups do i really want to sort of engage with which slack communities which you know discord communities whatever the case is um so i think that's that's interesting and grow your skills um i'd like to touch on like understanding business context and i think just like uh, to put it out in the open because of the nature of circles of influence these will probably be quite connected as we move um, but just to, to dive a little into understanding like the business context, um, how do I do that practically? Like, are there people I speak to? Are there questions I should be asking? Um, and what does that actually, what does that mean? What does that look like? So what I um, encourage people in my team to do and what I've done myself is um, you need to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And if you're not asking why, then you're just writing code, right? That that's literally and 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 we're engineers. We need to be taking part in what we do. We can't just be there writing a, a for loop or an if then else statement without figuring out where where it fits in. Um, and I always do this. What it, we used to call it storytelling or context setting session before we commence any piece of work. Um, these days, my team does it as part of a grooming discussion where you contextualize the problem. And we've got these really cool, uh, catchy phrases and invest check things that we reference, like um, the light bulb, the tech light bulb, or the funny five. And those are very clear things that, um, that, that people respond well to and can go, okay, cool, which one of the funny five does this actually tie back to? Why are we actually doing this? What is the business value that we would see out of this? So finding five is basically a list of objectives that we're striving for as an organization. I'll give you two examples. Cool. One of them is optimization, and that is like growth and revenue generation opportunities. They're literally strategic objectives that we're striving for. Um, so I quite like that they made it catchy, and Investic has been very clever in doing that and marketing that. And I reference it often. The team understands it. I gamify it <laughs> sometimes as well. We're like, um, name me two of the two or three of the funny five, like just randomly as like part of a quiz or something. So um, I think it's super important to be talking about that uh, to, uh, two teams um, and, and, and understanding w- w- where it all fits in. Um, everything has an intention. You need to be strategic in your thinking. You need to be selective in your in your learning. Um, and, and I think those two two things alone like will, will help you. To, to be successful in an organization. Yeah, and I really like what you said about like constantly asking 
asking yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and I think that's a really cool, like evaluative process um, that you can do, you know, like I said, it probably helps with you growing your skills. Cause if you know why you're doing it, you can better be selective um, about your learning. And there's actually, I don't know if you've, um, uh, uh, I think it's Simon Sinek, Start With Why. Um, yeah. Always talks about that, like, you know, make yeah, sure you know the why before before you do anything. Um, so that's that's really cool. And like you said, understanding the, the business objective will, um, yeah, will, will come from better being able to do that. Um, in, in terms of like understanding the world you live in, I think that's like, that sounds very scary to me because it's like quite a big, big question. It's like, what like what i guess what is the meaning of life could like fall into that but um how do you how do you interpret that what, what does that look like for your own for your own learning yes that's as simple as listening to seminar two or um understanding what's going on around you being aware of the impacts of COVID, um understanding the economy looking at um the rand dollar exchange rate look at the black lives matter look at like, things that trump is doing um I think it's super important to like look around you, even if it's as simple as watching videos on TikTok, right? That will influence and inform what's going on around you. Um, so it doesn't have to be this intimidating thing. And you'll see stuff and content posted, and you will definitely, definitely go and go, oh, what's this about? Oh, me too. I wonder what that's about. And go and explore what's going on out there in the world, right? Um, I think that's just a natural, natural human curiosity. And I'm saying hone in on that and like pay attention to the story of, of what that what that tells you and stuff. It's as simple as having an interest in understanding what's going on around you. And it's almost like um, you, you, you will definitely zoom in and look at, okay, cool. This has had an effect on, our, on um, the RAND dollar exchange rate. How is this influenced or how is this impact of the bottom line of invest? You'll get there very, very quickly just through a series of short uh, short answers. You don't even need to look at it in a broad context. You, I, I, I literally uh, sometimes at night I watch, <laughs> don't judge me, I watch TikTok. <laughs> very educational. This is very, very linked to learning. <laughs> yeah, super, super, super linked to learning. Um, but it, but following the right stuff and if you're looking at things like that the stuff that's posted on instagram and follow the right people trevor noah simon sinek you will have and 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 have and build this awareness around you and you'll understand what's going on around you and you will start asking those questions and you will understand what but what does this mean for me so what so what is how does this impact me and you'll very quickly get to that answer regardless of where you live or um or how you're employed you will definitely get, definitely get it tied right back to yourself. Yeah. So as as someone in the in media, I think, and this is definitely a muscle I had to train. Um, which I'd, I'd be keen to hear if you if you agree with this. Um, but what something which came to mind while you were talking was, um, I saw that Twitter recently added a a feature where if you retweeted something that you hadn't opened on your phone's browser, it would pop up a little message saying, "Would you like to read the article first? Um, and I think it's that 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 extra extra step of actually saying like engaging with things that are happening beyond just like looking at it and saying oh that happened to and maybe this ties back to you know ask why like why why would this be significant enough to feature in the news um and to to, to train that muscle of actually looking beyond i think um what interests me here as well is that we're starting to like it doesn't have to be related to your industry immediately for it to inform um, the other the other circles of influence like um, it's all transferable knowledge as well yes yeah no absolutely um, you used an, an interesting um, comparison there that that point of reference in terms of twitter um, I've, I've said something over the course of this interview i say zoom in um, you can also say double click you've got to yeah. click not it. You got to you got to understand the impact of what you're saying or what, or, or what it is you're sharing, right? Um, before you do it, because um, God forbid you you're sharing the wrong, the wrong thing or a message that you don't truly really believe in or doesn't align with your value set. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm also curious to know because I think um, and this is something I struggled with too. Is like um, in, engaging with those things is is not easy because sometimes they are very complicated. Sometimes they have uh, a lot of a lot of 
uh, history that you'd have to like figure out or read up on before it makes sense to you. So I can also imagine that having having like organic conversations as a way of leveling up, like being able to engage with world news or things that are happening that are larger than you, but having someone else to engage with makes it easier. I don't know if if that's a strategy you use in order to have have more dynamic or uh, more exploratory conversations or to make it more fun. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely I do. Um, I have conversations like that at home with my partner, um, friend, uh, conversations with colleagues. Um, I've all, I'm also very uh, selective about how I take in information. So I mentioned Trevor Noah earlier because he almost puts a fun spin on things, but while keeping you informed. And I think that's super, super clever, right? Because then you then you get it, you get more engagement from people and you get an interest in it and stuff and um, there, there's lots of examples like like um, other than Trivino of course as well and uh, like like I mentioned there's different social media platforms that you can you can engage in as well you have to keep it fun you have to keep it interesting you have to have to keep it interesting right because how else are you going to learn anything in this entire thing regardless of what it is um, so so I complete I completely feel you there. And and you've alluded to the fun already with the the business context of like having catchy phrases or um, including gamification or gamification into uh, into the, the 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 way you engage with business objectives or understanding your immediate context as well. Um, those obviously help help a lot with with making learning more fun. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and people respond well to it. Um, I've been I've been doing this a little while. I find things. Um, that I, I I basically like give my team options in terms of like how they want to like like take in something, give them the option like do you want to try this or do you want to do that type of thing. Something as as simple as understanding first as an individual understanding how you learn, but also understanding um, how others learn as well. Um, so in my case, it's like because I'm in a, in a stage where I'm influencing others. Um, so so yeah, I, I pay a lot of attention to. Um, not forcing um, just one particular style of learning on, on a team of people because people are super different and people respond to it differently and people you tend, are, are, are trying to figure that out for themselves as well. Um, so it helps to, to not say, hey, go read a book because it's not these days it's not about reading a book, right? It's not just about reading a book. To what extent does teaching others form a part of your own learning? Um, geez, it's, I think it's in, enormously important because you need to be able to understand the content well enough to be able to, to impart it on someone else. So it makes you reflect on it and, and question it, um, really interrogate what it is you, you're, you're trying to share. So these things that I've been ta- speaking to you about, just even from a business context, um, if I look at the funny five that I was chatting to you about, the things that I've looked at, um, I've gone away and thought about them, read up on them, looked at different vision documents and whatnot that were of interest to me, different architectural diagrams and where we're going um, before I started quoting them to the team uh, because they can't be meaningless words, right? So it's super, super important that you understand um, and context- contextualize it and it has to have meaning and purpose for yourself before you try to, to teach it to others. So yeah, definitely part of uh, helps enrich my journey. Yeah, and I'm sure you know people with fresh eyes. Um, and I've often had this with, uh, like, in my own experiences. People with fresh eyes often ask questions that you may have taken for granted. And you're like, actually, that's a that's a pretty good question. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, they offer you different perspectives, right? Um, different ways of seeing stuff, definitely. And what is one of the most, or what would you sort of classify as? Um, the single most impactful thing you've done for your own learning process as a developer? So I've been very specific and very selective about what I spend my time on and also who I spend my time with, if I'm being quite frank, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that basically sums it up. <laughs> and, and, and why has that been so impactful? Why, why is that, why has that been beneficial to your learning? given um, meaning and purpose to, 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 to my learning journey. Because um, I was also there uh, a couple of years ago when I was feeling overwhelmed because I was, I was sitting on a team of people that um, read a lot and, and did a lot and did a lot of meetups and that sort of stuff. And 
And some part of you starts to almost feel like, oh, shit, am I doing enough of this? Like, uh, should I be doing more of this and that sort of stuff? Um, and I realized that um, there's different ways and styles of learning. You have to be super selective about uh, uh, what, what you're taking in. And it's super duper important, so important for you to form an opinion of your own on any given top content. Um, and I'd say, I'd give that advice to any developer and I talk about it to my team. I always say that if you don't formulate an opinion for yourself, one is going to be forced on you, right? Um, and I've, I've, I found that quite powerful and, and, and that gives purpose to my learning journey. Um, and, and I think it's important for people to, to be able to speak to stuff with confidence. It helps build confidence as well, right? So, so that's, that's, that's what I do. I think, yeah, I mean, formulating an opinion on something I think is is really, really good advice. And that's a, a cool forcing function to to figure out the why um, to the stuff that you're engaging with. That is like the, those two seem to go hand in hand. You know, if, if, if you can answer why, if you can ask why, um, you can start building an opinion. Um, and that also, I guess, it sort of helps you contextualize the stuff you the stuff you're learning in the other circles, whether it's your business context, whether it's the, the worldview, because now you have an opinion that you can engage with um, or that other people can engage with. Um, and then it just like from there, it builds and builds and develops, which is really, really cool. Um, so just as a last, last very practical thing, um, for any developers who are listening, um, and maybe specifically in terms of uh, fintech, just because that's your, your sort of industry, um, what are like some some practical resources that you would um, that you would always point to if someone said, "Hey, I'm a developer in fintech. I want to level up." What are some so, some resources, either books or podcasts, um, that you'd sort of point point them in the direction of? I'm I'm a massive fan sort of TEDx talks. Um, and do you like that? That's that's me. Um, there's some podcasts that I've taken to, but I'm very much a fan of Audible. And certain audible books. Um, the ones that the, the go tos and the game changers for me in terms of being a developer were, but this is also quite dated, just bear that in mind, right? Because it would be the DevOps handbook, it would be the um, seat, seat at the table, right? And um, software craftsmanship, of course, I mentioned that to you before. Um, and there's one more that I did, but it's a very, it's quite a heavy and intense read, especially from a developer's perspective. It's the Bob Martin book, um, Clean Code, Game Changers, right? Uh, for in terms of like how you apply your craft and how you think about things. But they're also very heavy books. So I would say go and explore. There's lots of content out there about these things, summarizing what they do as well. There's YouTube content on it as well. As I mentioned before, it's like um, I literally use a combination of both social media audible and sometimes i literally i physically have a, a few books now that i actually choose to own like like physical hard copies type of thing so yeah those are some of my key go-tos um and just bear in mind that like my my recent um like ways of leveling up and scaling were, were a lot related to my leadership journey so a lot of those have been influenced and my, my reading and my content now being influenced like that so i follow people like simon sinek and um, I read and, and replay some of his content uh, to, just to kind of put myself up some time. So I hope that helps and answers your question. Yeah, and no, I think I think um, I also like the idea of uh, like replaying content as a way of sort of psyching yourself up. I think there are a few, um, either a few episodes of podcasts or a few uh, like clips or speeches that people have given, um, which I sort of try and come back to in certain moments to be like, you know, if I ever need to to feel good about the work I do, like here's the thing for that or if i ever need to like uh, get psyched psyched about leading a team or leading a group of people like this is the thing i should listen to um so i like i like that that piece of advice as well um yeah so i mean i think we've actually spoken about many books if if anyone's still looking for reading material during lockdown i think they've got a pretty good list pretty good recommended list um but otherwise yeah is 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 there anything else we haven't we haven't covered that you wanted to to mention or comment on or raise about um just leveling up as a developer Maybe just um, maybe just one uh, one point uh, that um, so I mentioned that uh, like it's really important to to learn to level up and to to obviously form an opinion on things and stuff and I found myself in the early parts of my career lacking confidence in some of these things 
So this journey has like really helped me a lot and, and to kind of grow and develop on that confidence. So I think that um, to anyone listening and I think if, even if you do it for no other reason and like or for lesser reasons, I think one of the most important things is do it for yourself and, and, and develop your own confidence in these things um, by reaching out, understanding why, being more curious about these things. I think it's, it's super important for you as an individual and any given content or any given topic. I love that, and I think you know you you said curious now, and that made me think as well. I I, I never I, I'm always very skeptical of that um, that phrase curiosity killed the cat because I think that kills a lot of a lot of the curiosity that people need. So I would always take that with a pinch of salt because um, I think curiosity is a beautiful a beautiful skill to to nurture. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for um, sharing sharing your journey and some insights. Um, I I really enjoyed talking to you, so it was really nice. Um, if people do have questions and they and they want to reach out to you, what's well, what's the best way to to sort of reach out um, via via the via the online the interwebs? Oh, geez, um, uh, LinkedIn. Um, I'm happy to. I can. Um, I'm nervous to say this, but like maybe my email address. <laughs> oh my! Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Let's just leave it at LinkedIn. I think. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just leave it at LinkedIn. I was just joking. They they can buy you dinner first, and then you can give them their email address. They can buy me dinner, <laughs> and I'm going to tell. Them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, LinkedIn's probably the best way to actually get a hold of me. So cool. yeah, I'd happen to see any related questions. Cool. Fantastic. I will I will link that in the description of this episode. And um, yeah, like I said, thanks so much for chatting. And yeah, we, we, it would be nice to have you back soon again. Thank you so much for having me. Really enjoyed it. Thanks again for listening to the OfferZen podcast. You can find more episodes in the series through Apple or Spotify or Google Podcasts. Um, you can also check it out on Stitcher, Player FM, and Overcast. If there are other platforms that you listen to that we 